I'm not kidding, a documentary, a documentary. So true, 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 this story about the experience of being born with and living with and getting through contemporary life when there's a new film every seven years when you're called James Bond. Matthew Bauer, Australian director and documentary filmmaker, and I don't know what the impetus for this idea was, but I'm about to find out, has made a documentary called The Other Fellow, which speaks to men around the world with the name James Bond and talks to them about that experience. Does that sound trivial? Mm, I don't think so. Does it sound life-defining? If you call James Bond, it pretty much is. Have a listen to this, James Bond. They wanted an intro to theater class. The professor asked everyone to go around the room and say, where they saw themselves in 10 years. After which every single actor chose to say, and I'm going to see my name in lights all over the country. And somewhere in the back corner it got to me and I just said, yeah, well, my name's James Bond and it's already in lights all over the country. Britain's number one secret agent is back. <laughs> and the complex relationship that these people, girl James Bond, have with this name, with the legacy, with the whole 007 thing, is a fascinating story. Matthew Bauer, nice to meet you. Good morning. Good morning, Virginia. Thank you for having me in. How did the idea leap into your head? Look, I mean, I was actually a member of in the kind of early days of Facebook, a, a group of people who had the same name as me. So oh, okay. the other Matthew Bowers. And we talk about really innocuous things like, you know, who's got, you know, Matt Bauer at gmail.com. He's got Matthew Bauer at gmail.com <laughs> and that kind of thing. And then I'm also a massive James Bond fan. And I think somewhere in there, a kind of spam email got written on my computer to people called James Bond to say, hey, you, you know, what what's it like? And they... They came back to me. I mean, you've seen the film Virginia, and mm. they, they came back to me with stories that were far beyond the martini jokes that I was expecting. And actually, the, we've got to dance around spoilers a bit here, Virginia. We but, do have but, to be careful because the, the revelations are great. Yeah, but yeah. the, 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 the very final James Bond who you meet in the final scene of the film was actually the very first person who wrote back to me. Right. And from hearing his story, I went, oh, okay, there's there's a film that can work back from this to get to that point. Yeah, and we won't reveal that point because it really is just an eye-opening moment. But I think for me, early on in the documentary, the, the real you know stop and take stock moment in the documentary is suddenly realising that if you're called James Bond and you meet someone for the first time and say, hi, oh, my name's uh, uh, James Bond, that every single time in your life you will have to endure a gag about that. And that person mm. thinking that they're saying it for the first time and that you've never heard it before. And just how defining of your world that is. Yeah, I mean, we probably don't think about it too much, about how much our name gets traded yeah. in society. On You know, I've just signed in here at the ABC and given my name, for instance, and then every time you give your credit card or mm. login information, especially these days in the digital space, we probably don't think about how much our name comes up every day mm. unless of course your name is something like James Bond where it gets highlighted you know add you know again and again just throughout your day and, and it sort of turns the people around you kind of into the enemy because everybody is somebody who can potentially make a joke well that's right people in the documentary speak about their hesitation at even saying their name that sinking feeling and saying I can see it in their eyes I, I can see the line coming yep. even before they're aware they're going to say it and I just steal myself for it we meet some in the documentary who changed his name, changed his, his surname uh, to mm. Hart and ha not only has no regrets about it, says, I miss nothing about that other name, about that other life, nothing at all. Yeah, no, I mean, our James Bond in London, which is obviously the epicentre of the James Bond phenomena, and significantly he is actually like a straight, white, incredibly handsome 40-year-old male. Sure. And, and so he actually found it the hardest of anybody and significantly he ended up taking his partner's name mm. you know and that's a big thing you know for a man to take the the, the woman's name mm. um quite progressive in some ways but it was because he it was his kind of escape from doing that and so what i found is you know these very significant life moments this is where this really comes up and names of course go on to our children and to our wives and partners as well and so yeah it's very personal so did you have difficulty tracking down james bonds or were they coming out of the woodwork 
I had great difficulty because, as you know, if you've seen the film Virginia, these people are ungoogleable because right. because if you try and Google James Bond, you get what's a, the phrase nine pages beforehand. Yeah, at least nine pages. Yeah, you you can't find them, and, and on Facebook they're not allowed to use their real name because it flags them for using a false name. Oh, really? So yeah, right. all all of my characters in the film on social media are called like Bond James or yeah. JB Bond, or one is actually James with three S's to get around that. So yeah, they are they are quite hard to find, but once you figure out. The, the the codes they use to exist online, you can then find them from there. Were they happy to speak to you? Yes. Yeah. I, I think they were kind of happy that someone was wanting to tell their story. Um, and this film very much does tell their stories. Uh, but yeah, they were largely happy. I, I find in America, people will talk to you. Um, in Europe, I'm sure you've had some experience with this. In, in, in Europe, people are less... Are willing to be in a documentary, so it takes a bit more coaxing over there. Although you certainly did coax a key figure into the documentary, and this documentary has all the colours. It's got the light, the shade, it's got some enormously painful moments. An essential story is the story of one man who has turned or has tried to turn himself into James Bond, and it's this incredibly painful story of a boy who was abandoned by his father. And he's very, he's very honest and open about how, in his mind, uh, Fleming, the author Ian Fleming, is like his substitute father figure. Yeah, no, so he's a man called James Bond in Sweden who actually did change his name mm. to James Bond, but I wasn't really interested in the name changes for flippant reasons. Um, but significant, I mean, that's just the icing on the cake. He, he has literally turned himself mm. into James Bond, and it was because, yeah, he lost his father after the Second World War and saw Fleming as a kind of substitute because they had very similar stories, actually, even though they were on different sides of the war. Um, and, yeah, and he's turned himself into James Bond, you know, and I arrived there in Sweden, Virginia, and, you know, he showed up in his Aston Martin, picked me up and walks off and says, hello, my name is Bond, James Bond, and you you go and drink. He actually prefers Bollinger Champagne to the martinis. I noticed. Uh, that That's his thing. But But he literally, you know, he lives life as James Bond, and he's had an incredible life. Because of it. And, you know, at first... I they clearly was, love him. Yeah, no, no. I at first thought, oh, this is going to be a crazy Swedish man. And actually, he's so crazy, it makes complete sense, actually. You know, with, without becoming James Bond, he wouldn't have become the man he is today. Uh, well, you're right. I mean, the, the, the crazy around it is is just breathtaking. But then the, the beating heart of his story is just this enormous, painful loss. And, yes, uh, and I, I found that deeply moving in 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 the film, and and then we move through all sorts of other stories besides. Uh, I think what's really uh, interesting to me as well is you've got that wonderful parallel with the story of how Ian Fleming stole the name of James Bond, which is a well t- a covered territory, but worth just telling in Precy anyway, because I do love that yarn. Yeah, I mean the name James Bond was stolen, and that was very much a part of the you know structure of our entire film, yeah. where where you know in, in the end there is another stealing of 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 the name, but certainly in the beginning, yeah, I mean Ian Fleming. A lot of people know this, but Ian Fleming actually stole the name for James Bond. For from an American ornithologist called James Bond. And he had a book on his bookshelf called Birds of the West Indies by James Bond. Mm. And it's because he wanted what he called a really flat, quiet name because heroes of the time were called things like Bulldog Drummond or Peregrine Carruthers. (laughs) And so he wanted a really ordinary sounding name. Unfortunately, the flow on effect of that is it was a name which many real people actually had, unlike, I'm sure there weren't too many bulldog drummonds out there in the 1950s. Um, But yeah, but we followed up on that ornithologist and actually what happened to him afterwards. And it turns out there was a minor media storm surrounding him once Mm -hmm. it came out. Um, You know, and so in our film, you you know, he's kind of the the first person who went through this. And then we cut to today, 60 years later, finding a lot of others who are still going through essentially the same problem. And what an interesting problem it is. Matthew Bauer is with you, director of The Other Fellow, a new documentary which speaks to men around the world with the name James Bond. Do you know if um, the makers of Bond, if Daniel Craig himself, is he aware of your documentary? I think they may just be aware of us. Yes, okay. uh, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I mean, I, uh, we'll see how we go. Da- Daniel is actually in the film. Daniel's actually in the film a bit more than I'm... Th- than you might think, actually, in the end. Um, yeah, we used a lot of archival footage, yes. and as the current Bond, he, he's he's in it quite a lot. And obviously we kind of refer to his struggles slightly with being James Bond as well. 
Um, but no, but I mean, our film is not, you know, we don't use any clips from the Bond films and it's not really about any specific no. film. It's about, for me, it's about because they have the same name, it means they are intrinsically connected to what we call the James Bond phenomena. Well, the, and that and that is what this, I think, documentary is remarkable. It's It's a really beautifully designed dive into a persisting moment in popular culture uh, that endures, persists and succeeds that all these people are haplessly caught up in. As one person is saying on text this morning, what were the parents thinking? Well, in the 1960s, they were thinking that sequel was a very new concept yeah. and, <laughs> and, that, and that nobody would think that this would go, <laughs> go for 60 years. You know, if your name was born and you had a child, obviously the name Jason would come to mind and you might go, well, they're not going to be making those films in 10 years still. Um, and then, again, we've got to be careful here, but then today, if you name your son James Bond, often there's a good reason and there are actually some very good reasons. There's a powerful reason in this documentary you get to at the end that we won't spoil either. Matthew, great to speak to you about your documentary. Well done. Thank you very much, Virginia. It premieres in Australia today at the Melbourne Documentary Film Festival. Hello, Rochelle. I love everything about that. From so trying cool. to make a reservation to dating <laughs> for the first time, do you pause before it like Bond does when someone says your name? Well, what do you drink? What do you order at a bar? There's stories in the documentary about how you're treated by the cops when oh, you give yes. your name as James Bond, <laughs> right? That's as the a, daughter of a country cop. It's a copper, really serious so moment, actually. It there would you be. Go. It would be. Yeah.